The first real emperor of ancient China was Jin Shi Huang. Born Ying Shang in 259 BC, he united the different kingdoms in 221 BC and ruled them all. He established a standard writing system, money, weights, and measures. He built roads and erected beautiful palaces in the capital Xi'an. The empire he forged turned out to be so strong it has survived for thousands of years and is even named for him. The word China comes from one of his names, Qian. Of course, that makes it sound like he was a benevolent and enlightened ruler, but he wasn't. Definitely not by modern standards. He didn't like scholars or books, burying some scholars alive and burning many, many books, including those by Confucius. He thought education for the common people took time away from growing crops. Emperor Jin's rule was so cruel that he lived in fear that he would be harmed in retaliation. It's said he rarely slept in the same palace two nights in a row. He also sent decoys who resembled him to meetings where his life might be in danger. He died in 210 BC after drinking a potion he thought would give him eternal life. One of Jin's most lasting achievements was the famous Great Wall of China. Around the year 220 BC, Emperor Qin began the huge undertaking of connecting the many different walls around China, some that were as old as 400 BC, and forging one enormous wall to keep out invaders. Built entirely by hand, the Great Wall snakes up mountain ranges, down into valleys, and across the deserts of northern China, stretching close to 4,300 miles. It's about 25 feet high and 15 to 30 feet wide. In addition to defense, the wall provided a way to transport men and supplies throughout China and to communicate with smoke signals. More than 2,000 years later, it continues to be one of the wonders of the world. After Emperor Qin died, Liu Bang became the first emperor of the Han Dynasty. Under the Han, China was no longer isolated, and it was during this time that the Silk Road was established, which was a network of trade routes between China and the ancient Western lands. China traded their silks and spices with the people of India, Persia, Arabia, North Africa, and even Europe. The nomadic traders who crossed the Silk Road took a dangerous trek, facing bandits, harsh climates, and rough terrain, but eventually, Chinese goods found their way to cities as far away as Rome. The Forbidden City is another amazing sight in China, often associated with its ancient past. But compared to the Great Wall and the Terracotta Soldiers, it's positively modern. Only 600 years old, that is. It was home to emperors during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Construction began on the palace in 1406, and millions of workers labored to build it over 14 years. When the Forbidden City was completed, a 26-foot wall and a 20-foot moat kept people out. For 500 years, most people were forbidden to enter the palace that 24 emperors called home, hence the name, the Forbidden City. With 900 rooms and 800 buildings, it's the world's largest palace complex. In 1949, it was open to all citizens of China and is now a museum. A brief talk about Chinese history, Shang Dynasty 1600 to 1066 BC. Learn about Chinese history spanning from 2070 BC to currently. This article talks concerning the second kinsfolk and therefore the tyrant of associate in nursing emperor UN agency all over it. After the defeat of Jia of Sha, the Shang Dynasty is currently my place. The Shang Dynasty spanned over 600 years and had 31 emperors from 1600 to 1066 BC. At the beginning of this kinsfolk Lolo principle contend a vital role, particularly once Tang died. Yi Lolan suggested and endorsed three emperors, waving, Zheng Ren and Taijia. Around 1541 BC. Tang's grandchild started neglecting state affairs, instead selecting to drink and target his concubines. Yi Lolan placed him below confinement for three years till he completed that he was movement his ancestors and determined to alter his ways in which. Taijia reformed his ways in which and once more took management of power and have become a wise king. Although alternative accounts states that Lolo principle tried to require the throne by putting Taijia under house arrest. 
During the dynasty they started victimization animal bones as oracle bones to predict the long run. They conjointly loved several gods and ancestors, basic cognitive process that their ancestors conjointly become gods when they died. There was a supreme god named Shangdi and he dominated over the opposite gods. However because the dynasty continuing they started go to a a lot of natural force named Tien, which can be translated as heaven. This natural force rule all the opposite gods and rule the world. The mandate of heaven was introduced within the Shang dynasty. Meaning that the emperor may rule unopposed unless there have been varied natural disasters or the sovereign has lost concern or bid along with his folks. When this happens the folks believed that emperor had lost the mandate of heaven and it had been acceptable to rebel and overthrow the emperor. This mandate gave legitimization within the following dynasties within the eyes of the folks. The Shang dynasty moved its capital V times the last time to town of Yin, beginning a golden space and conjointly nicknaming the Shang dynasty, the principal kinsfolk. Although the principal kinsfolk may consult with the late Shang dynasty, the end of the Shang dynasty was around 1066 with their power declining and Western Zhou dynasty kingdom's powers increasing. Again the emperor of dynasty at the time was a tyrant named Chou dynasty. Plus H.E. build a servid terrace many meters high with a circumference of some miles wide. Plus he created a bronze pillar and took amusement in look folks baked to death by the pillar. Plus H.E. uncle gave him some recommendation he censured of, thus he was killed and his heart was cut out. Plus he minister conjointly gave some recommendation and therefore the emperor injured him and created his skin into paper for a warning to others. At the Battle of Muya in 1044 Emperor Chinese of Zhou Dynasty had a finish against the Shang Dynasty and therefore the Emperor Zhou Dynasty. Emperor Chinese solely had a military of 70, 000 however Emperor Zhao had a 700,000 sturdy army. However wherever Emperor Wu's army was well trained, well fed, work associate in nursing strong, Emperor Zhao army was comprised largely of slaves and didn't need to die for an emperor that they didn't care for. The battle was short with Emperor Zhao's army fleeing. Seeing his army fleeing Emperor Cho dynasty of dynasty visited the highest of his place and set himself aflame, killing himself during a inferno. Ending the Shang dynasty.